Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. Nobody's walking out on this fun old-fashioned family Christmas. No, no, we're all in this together. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Fragile. It must be Italian. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. I didn't know you had elves working here. Know what time it is? What time is it? It's Christmas time, bitch. Yay! Wow. Wait a minute, you can't say bitch for Christmas. I do what I want. Oh, wow. Well, it's our first Christmas episode of the year. One of four. Star yes. Wars is yes. taking over yes. one. Yay! <laughs> also, yes, yay for Star Wars. I'm a huge fan. Uh, I'm going to be distracted all night. Why? I was cutting an episode of the other show today, and the last 16 minutes are unusable. Just the audio just went totally wonky, but only in the last 16 minutes, so I'm going to be constantly checking everything today. So sorry if I'm mildly distracted. That's okay. I'm distracted for a good cause. All right. Making sure we don't have unusable audio. That's also important. Yeah. <laughs> so like, oh, well, that'll be a, you know, that show will be a lie. A it, crafted it together lie. Two conversations turn to one. It will be. Oh, I don't want to remove that. Hold on a second. I'm paying attention. Technical yeah. difficulties? Yeah, technical difficulties. Well, I'm just going to sip on this gin. Mm. Alcoholic. Good for you. Yeah, you've switched to gym. To gym? Could be. You've switched to gin. So what What be the reason of that, if I may ask? I just had one out at a bar. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I really like gin. I mean, okay, I, fair I enough. I it's not like you're doing it for like the holidays? No. People okay. always talk about like gin and tonic. What a Christmassy drink. I'm like, it's just gin. It's fine. It's not it's, Christmas. It's, I don't know why people think not, it's Christmassy. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, when people are like, I like a light beer in the summer, I mean, I don't, but I can understand at least the seasonal aspects of beer, but when people are like, gin is Christmassy, it's not. It's just gin. But you're doing it neat. You're doing it straight up. No, there's tonic and lime in there. Oh, there is tonic and lime? Yeah. Okay. That, no, that's not just an entirely full glass of nothing but gin. Well, gin is clear, so I guess, yeah. yeah. So is it like, it's green, so it's like a Christmassy drink. That's, you know, well, maybe... That's just because I'm cheap. I don't, I don't... Maybe you should get some red food coloring and put it in your ice cubes, and then you have like a little Christmas theme. It's green because I'm cheap, because, you know, you're supposed to like get a lime, it's slice red. it up, s- squirt the lime juice. It's I just buy like a little garnish, maybe? Well, just the lime juice is supposed to add, so I just buy lime juice and shoot some in there. Yeah, because a, a gin and tonic should be clear. Yeah. But then you have like a couple of drops of lime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just buy lime. Or maybe a little, a little, little uh, lime zest. Do you know how to make a zest? Yeah, I have. We have a zester. A zester is that what is that the technical term for that? I think so. Oh, oh, okay. So we get confirmation. Upst- it is called a zester. <laughs> Upstairs confirmation. The co-host of the other show says quick it's review. A, got a right. quick review. One of the biggest your, books of the year. Zester. It's fine. I don't really agree with zesting. I feel like it wastes an entire piece of fruit. We can still have the inner part of the fruit. It never gets used. Why not? I, I, that's because you're being lazy. Apparently I should add it to my gin. There you go. Doomsday Clock number one. The, I, I can't call it long-awaited sequel to Watchmen. We're just going to call it the surprise sequel to Watchmen. How is it? How is it? Really friggin' good. As you would hope and expect yeah. it to be? Well, I mean, no expectations behind it because... <laughs> Watchmen wasn't a book that needed a sequel. But you got one anyway. Yeah, you know what? Issue one is out. It's going to be 12 parts. No tie-in books, no nothing. It's going to totally stand on its own. And issue one, really damn good. You don't hate it? No. My only complaint... i got to keep stop repeating this because I've said it to like a million people this week. Well, now you got it on the record. Yeah, so I know you, about How do you feel about the new Watchmen book? You can just be like, uh, listen to the podcast. And I'll tell you. My only issue with it is... It's supposed to take place in, like, 94. The original Watchmen was, like, 86. Alternate reality, you know, 86. But you know that because you read it. Yeah, well, I skimmed it. Yeah, no kidding. I glanced. That was a long time ago. <laughs> um, when I didn't have faith in the show. <laughs> that's fair. But kind of the whole sociopolitical climate that's being presented in it is 100% 2017. Hmm. So some of it's, like, that stuff feels a little thin. You're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. The Russians, yeah, great, cool. Interference. Yes. On yeah. the offense. But beyond that, that, that is Don't a... Don't worry your eyes about me farting during the show. You are the worst perpetrator of that, A. And B, you always lean it towards me, so if I rip one in your direction, well, ho, 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 and Merry Christmas. I always cut that. Oh, you cut it all right. <laughs> I cut plenty of things. Do you know how much you sniff? It's going to come out in the future that all these years you've had a secret cocaine habit. I'm going to go, yeah, I know. I had the proof all along. It's not really much of a secret. <laughs> or a habit, really. It's a way of life. <laughs> it's a system, Zach. You know what a system is? It's a way of doing things. 
But Doomsday Clock is great. I'm looking forward to the rest of the series. I was cautiously optimistic, and I am happy that it is as good as it was. Does it have Dr. Manhattan in it? Not yet. Will it? Oh, yeah. Rorschach's dead, though. Oh, but there's Rorschach in this book. What's up with that? I don't want to talk about it. It's really hard to talk about without spoiling it. Okay. But he's there. Well, that kind of spoils something. Or does it? I don't know. I, I can't really. What about the guy with the bird head? The guy with the bird head. Night Owl, no idea yet. Oh. He wasn't in this first issue. Okay. I got there from that vague, vague description. Bird is pretty straightforward. <laughs> owl man or whatever he is. Owl boy. Night Owl. I just said Woo! Night Owl. Woo! Who's moving on to the news? It's we me. are. We do. <laughs> Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. Let's talk Justice League. Again? Have you changed your mind? Um, no. Now I'm conscious of my sniffing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Not so secret cocaine habit. That's like Clark Kent coming <laughs> back to Clark life in front of all of Metropolis. Clark, it's me, Clark. Lois, your girlfriend. Clark Kent. You know, uh, Superman. Cal L. They at least picked they up use, as Superman, I think. They use all three of his names as aliases in that one scene. <laughs> it is projected that it will lose roughly a hundred million for Warner Brothers. Well, second week at the box office, it's already been taken over by Coco. It never stood a chance against Coco. That movie is supposed to be spectacular. Yeah. Also, I mean, they spent twenty five million dollars on Henry Cavill's face. I know, but yeah, they're looking at a projected hundred million dollar loss. I think the way that you recoup this is in the way that you'll get me back, and certainly I'm sure others, extended cut on Blu-ray. See if you can expand it out a little bit. Fix it. Hopefully. Like, give it a second act. Yeah, that would help too. Can't hurt it. Or, as one actor has reported, maybe change scenes back to their original intent in reshoots. Oh. Yeah. Remember a scene, we'll call it, I mean, not the cold open, real scene one of the movie. Batman gets a criminal. Yes. And it has this, like, one beat where it's, like, almost funny. Like, he sees Batman in the shadows, drops the bag. You think, like, oh, it's so, like, he's dropping it. And then he, because he's like, you know what, I'm out. Pulls out a gun. And then he turns, pulls the gun. According to that actor, that was a fully comedic scene. Really? In the way that they shot it. And the Warner Brothers executives pushed back on weed and then they didn't want that. They didn't want to have a funny opening. Huh. So, beyond just massive reshoots, it almost... Reports are coming out that there was even more meddling than people originally thought, even within the reshoots themselves. So maybe like a uh, Justice League redux? Yeah, who knows what happened. To the point where Whedon sent this guy a bottle of champagne with a handwritten note, like, said, like, to battles lost. The guy's like, I had it framed. It's very sweet. Wow. So, who knows? So it sounds like there was a tonal shift, and then Warner Brothers tried to reel back from that tonal shift. And there's, um... I didn't talk about this the first time, but other people have been mentioning it, so I thought I would as well. In the movie's opening credits, when you have a cut of a movie, you, especially if you have, like, Final Cut, like, we didn't would have, or he would have had, like, Final Cut fully, but he at least would have been part of the final edit. People, especially, like, directors, will kind of cherry-pick where their name falls as far as what's on screen. We didn't, if you listen to, like, one of the three commentary tracks for Serenity, he talks about getting the right placement of his name and what shot he wanted that over. If you look at the shot where his name shows up as um, scripted or the co-scripting by, it's over a guy who's holding a sign that just says, I tried. Really? I noticed that the first time around, but I did think it was worth mentioning because I, you know, I've heard Whedon, you know, from the horse's mouth that he places credits over certain images, especially when it comes to his own personal credit. Ah. So that might be a little bit of a nudge nudge. Oh, like this is, this could have been better if they let me do what I wanted to do. Yeah, so there's a guy in the movie holding a sign that says, I tried also... You know, I didn't have it written down, but I'll mention it anyway, because it's been debunked since then. Supposedly, Whedon had been fired from Batgirl, not due to Justice League's poor performance, but due to controversies with his personal life. The site that originally reported that, Warner Brothers sent them a cease and desist, said it wasn't true, but we'll see, because it's not like there's anything been solid about that movie so far. They need they need a shot in the arm. They need a good. They need another Wonder Woman type movie. Maybe he's been fired for you know screwing around on his wife for fifteen years. It could be a reason why you get fired and hiding it for a number of years as beyond a, that. As a big public figure, and yeah, yeah, you know, guy who's like women's rights, but you know, as long as you're not my wife, yeah, so, everybody so but bad. her. Everybody but her. Is what it sounds like. Speaking of people being fired, Phil Lord and Chris Miller came out this week to finally talk about their firing from the Han Solo solo movie project it's basically what we heard before it didn't there was no shockers in there they're like 
you know, when you're dealing with a studio that big, you really need to be on the same wavelength. We weren't. We were doing a totally different movie than what they wanted. And ultimately, when the people who are writing the checks write the checks, you can get canned. And they're like, we had a great cast of crew. No hard feelings. Though this other guy was like, but if the movie bombs, you know, no hard feelings there either. No, no, I don't feel <laughs> Maybe it's terrible. I, at least That's you fine. T- I tried. It wasn't the two of them. I don't know who this third individual was who spoke up, but someone associated with them. Ant-Man of the Wasp is rap production. Oh, that's excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to this movie. We didn't get to cover Ant-Man stuff before Ant-Man happened just because the show didn't exist. But Yeah, we can't go back in time. That movie, it's fine, but with all the production troubles that it had, it had Justice League levels of production troubles. And it's pretty fine. It's not it terrible. Doesn't, it doesn't deserve to be as good as it is. So the fact that they got to have like a singular vision from beginning to end on the sequel without, you know getting a director in when production had already started and retooling the script about four separate times. I'm looking forward to it. I think it will be better than the first. It can't not, be bad. Not that the first was bad. It was fine. It's in a real bad mood when I saw that movie. Yeah, man. Yeah, the guy next to me wouldn't stop texting. Had a real pet peeve about Did, that. Didn't we talk about this before? Maybe. I don't know. It pissed me off and it stuck with me. Okay. It was also the same night that Gardner burned down. Oh, that was a summertime thing. I could tell you the exact day I saw Ant-Man. Just look up the day Gardner burned. I had a summer basketball thing that day. I remember that well now, too. Wow, memories. So based on when we record this thing, uh, we're not going to be able to... We'll have, like, the world's latest reaction to it. Infinity War trailer is out now. Is it? Well, no, not for us. For the listener. Comes out Uh, tomorrow. Oh. So by tomorrow, Patreon people will get to see it. And then the day after that, for the, the regular folk who just you know consume content without paying for it so karen gets to hear about tomorrow more than that but yeah so the avengers infinity war trailer is out is it going to be any different than the leaked one from yeah they're always different unless they release the leaked one here's my current feelings on avengers infinity war i'm looking forward to it i'm gonna see it let's see if my reaction is different next week after i see the trailer i have a feeling that it's not gonna be any different no they put out a tease for it today, but not because usually teases are like a couple of seconds of it. They strung together like footage of people doing like trailer reaction videos to other Marvel movies. Really hate trailer reaction videos. Have you ever watched a trailer reaction video and just freaked out for two and a half minutes? Like, no. Maybe you could have a laugh or maybe a gasp. But if I watch a it thing, it's pretty silent. Maybe a one second physical reaction. But I see these trailer videos and people are just like, oh, oh, oh my God. Stop playing it up. Just stop shooting these videos. These are dumb. I don't care. But you keep watching them. I don't. You get sucked in. You must have watched it. I mean, if you're having this kind of a visceral reaction to it. I think it's I'm more seeing clips like that. But no, I I don't care for trailer reaction videos. Fair. Because what's the point? Uh, I don't know. What is the point? None. There is no point. I don't know why I'm coming down on these. But whatever. That trailer's out. I'm sure it's fine. But we do like whole trailer breakdowns on our show. Yeah, but I'm not reacting to it. I'm looking. I'm literally hitting the space bar every millisecond trying to figure out what's going on. Eh, I think that's like kind of six of one, half dozen of another. I mean, you don't like have these massive freakouts about it, I guess. So, I mean. Controversy. Yes, please. Newly appointed editor-in-chief, C.B. Sabolsky. Yes. Was outed today by my least favorite, and I'm going to throw the uh, term comics journalism in strong, big air quotes. Okay. But apparently it's true. Bleeding Cool. Really dislike that website. But you're going with their story. Uh, Appears to be true. There's enough behind it. They're the ones who broke it, but yeah. Okay. Ugh, I hate when they ever do anything that's accurate just because I have to be like acknowledge it. Well, at least you credited your sources. That's good, good, good sighting. No plagiarism. C.B. Sabolsky was an editor at Marvel, and during the mid 2000s, he wrote comics under a Japanese pseudonym. This is problematic for two reasons. Some people have been like, that's racist. That's, that's not the issue. I also doubt the guy's racist. He's literally spent the last couple of years in Asia working for Marvel. Yeah, probably don't send the racist over there. Probably not. This is problematic for two reasons. I'm listening. Number one, if you're an editor, you're not supposed to be writing. That's taking away freelance work from other people. That used to be a major issue with Marvel. Like, editors would just give things to other editors, and it became this whole thing of, you know, snaking its own tail. That got broken up pretty hard. Like, to the point where, allegedly, this individual had a full, like, biography... And even at one point, someone pretended to be him, this fake pseudonym. Okay. So aside from taking work away from freelancers, which Marvel was supposed to have gotten away from, it also deals with the fact that comics is basically the white dude breeding ground. So also false representation of diversity. 
those were my two kind of takeaways from it. And now he's out. No, he's not out. Oh. This this just like this dropped like an hour ago. Oh, okay. This news is too new to know what. So we're breaking the story-ish. We're not breaking it. I read a breaking thing and then saw some confirmation behind it and then chose to, you know, regurgitate. Fair. Reasonable. I mean, who the hell knows? I don't. The Shadow knows. That's a new one. What? I, I don't know. That's a weird story, right? It's not anything that we've ever heard of before. I mean, people have written under pseudonyms before, certainly constantly all the time, but it wasn't for, like, faking that you were a writer and also not faking diversity. If anything, people who would write under pseudonyms are doing the opposite of faking diversity. Yeah, they're like totally going mainstream. Yeah, like, oh, this my name sounds a little too ethnic. Let's try and Americanize it a little bit. This is the opposite of that. I mean, even, you know, your Marvel biggies, like Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, both pseudonyms. Yeah, that's not their real names. No, a lot of radio personalities, TV personalities, they have pseudonyms too. Yeah, but I mean, they both had relatively stereotypical Jewish names like Jacob Kurtzberg, Stan Lee Lieber. Yeah. Change them up a bit. Yeah. But not a whole lot. No, but still. Yeah, so this is the opposite. That's weird. We'll see what happens. I have no idea what the follow-up's going to look like. I don't see... I mean... What are they some gonna... people are rushing to defense. Some people are attacking... I have no idea. This is so new. Is I sense I sense next week we're going to have a this is dumb news segment. I didn't want to call it stupid news because it felt like it was marginalizing it. <sighs> so it's it's stupid in its own way, but it's yeah. not what I would like classify it or just like this is moronic news, which is what I like to save that segment for. Okay, it's not like it's yeah, I get it. Like the Justin Bieber Twitter beef thing from months ago that we did where's the twitter beef remember oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah the one he had with like what marilyn man something, something like that yeah which had nothing to do with comic books so yeah weird weird controversy weapon h we've talked about this character before he's the hulk wolverine combination it's a very formidable opponent super 90s idea but damn it i kind of like him he's just like, over the top fun an un- unbeatable guy yeah but somebody will beat him at some point probably like killing him I somehow but he's going to get his own solo title, and he's going to be written by uh, the character's creator, Greg Peck, with artist Corey Smith on the book as well. That's, you know, not a ton of information about it, but if Greg Pack's on it, generally I like his work. Uh, that's Hulk and Wolverine all rolled into one. Also that, yeah. So it's got that going for it. Yeah. You remember the mo- movie and comic book, Kick-Ass? I do. Well, Kick-Ass is coming back with an ongoing Hit Girl series. Wasn't there Kick-Ass 2.0, too? There was... Uh, Kick-Ass 1, 2, 3, plus a Hit-Girl mini. Uh. And now it's coming back with a Hit-Girl ongoing. And it's going to be a... It's not just Mark Millar who's doing it, or Mark Miller. I never know. And I I think he just messes with people and tells people different information, because I don't think anyone knows. Because he can. I think... The Shadow knows. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know the Shadow knows. I swear to God, he just screws with people. I have nothing to back that up with. It's just my own personal theory. But... So a lot of big comic writers are coming in, but the way that it was getting a lot of press coverage was saying that Kevin Smith will be writing the second arc in this ongoing series. Every writer gets an arc. Really? Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. And this is going to be in comic form? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the ongoing Hit Girl series, which sounds like it's more going to be like, here's an arc, here's an arc, here's an arc, here's an arc, just by different kind of superstar writers. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. Kick-Ass is... Fun. It gets a little too Millar or Miller at points, and we've talked about it before. How so yeah, there between, always has to be the big thing of between like, Rouge and Rouge. Yes, how he always has to throw in the thing of I'm being subversive. Yeah. Oh, look at this! I am really being over the top, and I want you to look at this. I'm drawing attention to something that's already got your attention. Yeah, it's like you don't see this in other things. Like usually, like yeah, there's a reason we don't. Yeah, because this <laughs> taste. <laughs> yes, usually it's not always in the best of taste. Standards. <laughs> I mean, on the other hand, he's an amazing writer. On the other hand, sometimes he's terrible. Usually, more on the amazing side. Yes, the Malar side is. A... Yes. <laughs> Those are the, the Millar, Millar. The Millars are the sophisticated ones. The Millers, that's the daft and dirty <laughs> stuff. Those are the people when they show up for the family holiday, you're like, oh, damn it. Hey, if you haven't read Marvel Legacy, here's a spoiler. Wolverine's alive again. Yeah, he's Weapon H. No, regular old cowboy hat wearing Wolverine. We talked about this last week. Well, there's more news about it. What, what else? Has Where he got a new he? cowboy hat? Does he have some new Stetsons? Maybe he's got some new Justin boots on. Well, How about a pair of dungarees? Does he have a giant adamantium belt buckle? Well, if you want to know the answer to those questions, I know where he's going to be appearing. In a book. Yeah, but which book? The Rhode Island Comic Con. A bunch of them is the answer. 
I thought this was actually, it's totally a marketing gimmick, but damn it, it's kind of a smart one. Is it got you? I was going to read this stuff anyway, so it's fine. It's not really expanding or taking away from what I was going to do as it was. But Wolverine will be appearing in after credit scenes in a series of mainstream Marvel titles. Really? So his first, it's going to start in January. He's going to appear in an after credit scene in Captain America, Mighty Thor, Amazing Spider-Man. That's just January. I don't know what's happening after January. But to kind of build up to his main return, it's, like, it's all connected. So you got to read all these, or you don't have to read the whole book, but you just got to pick up the other books to read his ongoing story of his return. So it's just making you buy more books. Totally. They're taking their second most popular character and saying, you want to see him? You've got to come find him. Buy more books. Can't fault him. It's a good idea. And I want to know what's going on, so hey. Tell me more. I mean, I'm already paying for these books anyway. I mean, it's true. Yeah, you are. I'm the one giving Marvel the money. Everyone else just gives me money to recoup what I spent. And that's a business model. A terrible business model. Not a good one. Really, comics are the worst. You chose it. It's the game you chose, man. <laughs> but that's a thing. Tell me more. I don't know. Okay. Maybe I'll cut this news story. Maybe I won't. Are you interested in the boobs news story? Uh, yes. Okay. That wasn't really... We'll do the boobs story. Please. Yes. Uh, released on Instagram this week. This was teased before that Sean Gordon Murphy's Batman series was going to be doing some things that hadn't been seen before in Batman comics, including... Boobs. A nude love scene between Harley and the Joker. Wow. No, I don't want to see Joker dong. Well, you don't see that. Oh, you see some Harley boob? Yeah. It was released... Is it tasteful? Um, yeah, I thought it was fine. I actually thought it was a really well-constructed page, because it got thrown up online, like, in full color and everything, and basically it came out that, you know, DC kind of backed down from the whole, like, you can do whatever you want thing, and, you know, the aerial will now be covered with word balloons. Ah. But you can, you know, if you ever, first canonical nude Harley, I guess. I'm sure, you know, if you look that up, you could find a lot of fan art of it, but... This is the first time it's happened legitimately in the books. It's going to be covered in the final print, but you can find it on Instagram. And actually, it's a really well-constructed page. Like, you can follow the whole story. You don't need any dialogue. I can tell you everything happening on that page. Really? Just based on the art and the flow of it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good. No, he's a really good artist, but, you know, the the promised boobs are only there on the internet now. Oh, uh, well. It's fine. People will survive. Yeah. That page is going to go for a lot of money. Is it? Oh, yeah. First, nude Harley, are you kidding? Yeah. I mean, he's been putting all those pages up. Like, the low end has been a thousand, higher end has been like six to eight for the pages. Covers go for more, but nothing under a thousand. And for that, I would put that one, I bet that'll get listed for like eight or nine. Really? Yeah. Well, that's exciting. I guess if you're selling it. But you can find digital copies of Harley's boob on the internet. Just on Instagram. Oh, well. Good for her. She's a real yeah. celebrity now. You haven't made it until you have a nude of you on the internet, I suppose. What? You looking up boobs? Oh, there it is. The much talked about scene with Jack and Harley and White Knight. But from there, let's move on to a holiday themed Jared's Reading Corner. Ho, ho, ho. It's Jared's Reading Corner. This week, we are talking one of my all time favorite Batman stories. Barely has Batman in it, but still, one of the best single issues. In the mid 2000s, Paul Dini who's best known for his work on the Batman animated series, took over Detective Comics for a while, and he wrote a series of one-shots. Basically, every one-shot was focusing on a different villain. It's great. It was a great run, and I highly recommend it if you like. You want to get into Batman? This is just a series of one-shots. kind of gives you all you need to know about all the major villains. Yes. And a couple of ones that aren't as major. But it's a great run. And it peaked with a Christmas story called Sleigh Ride. Spelt, as you would imagine it, in a Batman comic. Yeah. S-L-A-Y. We start with Tim Drake. I had to ask which Robin it was because I'm ignorant. They all look the same. Oh, I should have known because he didn't have the best ass in the DC Universe. And he has long pants. That's also a good giveaway. And uh, Tim has been shot while chasing down some people on one of Bruce's motorcycles, which he crashes, which is going to really upset Bruce. So yeah. He also throws a smoke bomb into their car. Well, like, ha ha! That probably wasn't a very good idea. But we find Tim in some trouble. And Tim is, like, really in trouble. Like, he's been wounded-ish. He's sort of smoke bomb into a car. The bike is destroyed. And everyone has guns but him. And it's snowing. It's just not a, it's not a very safe time to be riding the bat bike. That's also true. No one rides a motorcycle in the dead of winter. I'm just saying. So, yeah. Probably, you know. Unless he's got, like, some snow tires on that thing. Don't bring a smoke bomb to a gunfight? Yeah, you probably also shouldn't do that. Uh, so he's in deep trouble. And then, well, Tim breaks rule number one. He takes a ride from a stranger. 
Well, someone pulls up. They go, Robin, Robin, come over here. And Tim's in her model and goes, don't know who this is, but, you know, any port in a storm. Yeah, again. Guess what? Not true. Yeah, don't take rides from strangers, especially ones with white face paint, green hair, and red lipstick. And a Santa hat. Yes, and a Santa hat. Very festive. And, uh, and a gas that can knock you out as well. So Tim jumps into the Joker's car, clearly a setup. Yes. And I love the opening line. Just goes, sup. Yeah. <laughs> and then, shh. Yeah, gases Tim. He gets a little Joker mace in the face. So the reason that I love this issue so much, being done by Paul Dini, who uh, crafted the animated series Joker expertly, it's hard not to read this Joker without hearing Mark Hamill's voice because the dialogue is right out of the animated series. But where this book shines that the animated series couldn't do, obviously a show targeted at kids, there are restrictions. So this is like the pitch-perfect animated series Joker, but he's allowed to kill a lot of people. And he does so. <laughs> oh my, he does. So th- yeah, this is just animated series Joker, but on steroids. But not the physical kind. Yes. This is where he sleigh rides. On the ride. murder kind. His ride is a sleigh ride. But poor Tim, well, he's been drugged. He goes back and has a flashback. And not so recent flashback, but a flashback nonetheless. Which I have no idea what's going on other than he's being explained the origin of the Joker and that the Joker is a huge Marx Brothers fan. Look, do you guys remember one year later? It's, it's when, yes. It's, no, you don't. No. <laughs> no one ever talks about that anymore. But yeah, the, the flashback is within the um, before the one year later stuff. You know, during the 52. No, not the new 52. The original 52, that whole thing. Whatever, moving on. Doesn't matter. Tim's on a yacht. He's on a boat, and... He's talking to some guy in a black t-shirt who I have no idea who the hell he is, and... That's Dick. It is? Oh, okay. I, I realize that we don't see him from behind, but that's Dick. Oh, okay. He's got he's sporting quite the, the holiday bulge. Is that a thing? For the holidays? I mean, it's a festive Yule log. I mean, it's not a log, but it's... Is the season to be merry? Yeah, the two of them are watching. How do you? How did you not pick up on that? Do you even know what that's from? I guess not. I wasn't listening. To be fair, it, it's like the Yule log. It's it, well, it's not exactly a log. Mm. That's the holidays. Tis the season to be merry. Oh, that's my name. How about this? I'll give you another one. Hey, Russ, you can't see the lines. Oh no, I got it. Yeah. Well, come on, spit it out. I haven't seen that in forever. I can't do lines from it. No, just what movie is it? Oh, uh, Christmas Vacation. That a boy. You haven't seen that for that's a holiday staple. You know what I missed tonight, by the way? Rudolph was on tonight. That's fine, it's crap. No, it's not crap. You shut your dirty whore mouth. <laughs> okay? You Scrooge, you buff fucking humbug guy over here. The Rankin Bass. I think I've also made it clear that I don't care for those. Well, because you are a Scrooge. You are a curmudgeon of the highest order. We're literally talking your about Your heart is Christmas three sizes story. too small. It's more of a condition. <laughs> The Grinch overcame it. <laughs> also a condition. <laughs> Whatever. But Tim pauses his Marx Brothers movie. He's like, hey. Yay, Tim. What do you think about the Joker? And Dick's like, no one really knows. There's a bunch of different stories. All we know is that he loves what he does. And outside of their room on the yacht, we see Bruce. Just destroying everything. The strangest panel in this book. He has a series of logs just stacked up. And he's acrobatically leaping amongst them. Karate chopping and kicking logs just to splinters. Yeah, with his, you know, with no like Kevlar armor that he has normally. As you do, you just chop a log with your hand. You got to develop like a callus on your, yeah. So yeah, I get that. And Bruce, done from chopping, goes inside. He's like, yeah, Joker's a nasty dude. He will scan the entire room for the person who's the most scared of him. Just hone in on them and destroy them. Yes. Huh, it's almost like Tim right now. Well, there's only one person to hone in on, really. Yeah, because, well, the people in the backseat, not so well. I don't know that yet. Uh, I'm just guessing. Anyway. You're, you've read it. There yes. is no guessing. Tim comes to and he's... caught in a lie. Tim, is, Tim comes to and he's very festively bound up with Christmas lights and a Christmas ornament, which... And duct tape. Yes. It can't be a glass Christmas ball, because it would shatter in his mouth. But you know what? It has to be because it's the Joker. Maybe yeah, he's probably just not biting down. Yeah, it certainly looks like it's it's yeah, it's a ceramic. Yes, a classy one. And the Joker is being super friendly. He's it's being like, hey, I tossed out your utility belt. Didn't want you dealing with that. But seeing as how this is the festive time, I'm just gonna you know we're gonna drive around, we're gonna talk, and then I'm gonna let you go. Let bygones be bygones. Instead of us trying to kill each other. Wrong. And Tim is just trying to say, like, stone-faced, like, don't give him anything to work with. But the Joker has cranked up the heat in the car. He has cranked up the seat warmers. He's got up to 92. He's also in a 95.6. Must be the Gotham Christmas Station. 
Or that's just the time. Yeah, it's probably just the time. Yeah, it's 92 degrees in the car. And also the seat warmers are on. And I love that Tim calls it like... The slow torture? He's like, start the torture light. I'm like, are seat warmers torture? Usually they were a delight. I love my seat warmers in my vehicle. I don't have them. You, you haven't lived, man, until you have a warm butt. Well, even this came out in 2006. And in my head, I was like, they had seat warmers in 2006? Yeah. I guess so. There's a friend of mine whose um, father owns a, a really old... Um, Mercedes, like 1984 Mercedes, seat warmers in the front and rear. So while Tim's inner monologue is telling that some kind of a trick. The Joker just <laughs> plows over a guy with his car. Random guy. And then says, oh no, we should check on him, and backs up over the guy. Yeah. Oh my god. Did you see it? That poor old man. He ran right in front of me. We better back up and help him. Yes. And just hits him again. Oh, that wasn't a good idea. And this is the first time we kind of see a change in the demeanor of the Joker's face from, like, kind of, like, pleasant and helpful to, like, evil. Yeah, a very sinister smile, trying to see Tim's reaction. It's like, oh, why don't you look out the window to see how he is? And Tim turns his head around to find the owners of this SUV dead from Joker toxin. Yeah. Eyes bulging, face a grin. Not chagrin, but a grin. A grin. And they're super dead. Yeah, so Tim's like, well, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so the Joker calls 911. It's like... There's an emergency. There was a hit and run. And he hits another woman. He's like, oh, side note, new street now. Different hit and run. Classic Joker. Classic Joker. And Tim kind of breaks that. And, you know, he has his ball gag in his mouth. So we can't quite say son of a bitch. Yeah. He comes out. Suh. Oh, he does get of out. Suh. Uh, uh, bith. Of a bith. <laughs> the Joker's just, he gets so indignant. Yeah. I love how so many of the Joker's emotions are his real emotions. Like he's just genuinely not happy with what happened. He's like, hey. Easy does it on the language. It's snowing outside. The roads get slippery. Yeah. And he means it. Yeah, he's there's like... Not, there's no lie there. There's no... Like, he's not putting anything on. 100% the truth. He's like, it's, it's raining. In his it's eyes. It's snowing. It's dangerous out. It's not my fault. So then he just hits a few more people. <laughs> this vehicle, by the way, handling it like a champ. This SUV. So in Tim's mind, he goes, okay, SUV, there's a couple in the back. They must have a kid. I love the deductive reasoning yeah. by Tim. And then it's also kind of like heartbreaking. He's like, oh my god, they have a kid. Like, his his or her parents are dead. But this is like the Batman part of it. Like, he, you can see kind of thinking yeah. into like how Batman has trained him how to think. Well, I mean, Batman has said many a time that Tim is going to become the world's greatest detective. That he will surpass Bruce in every way. Oh, good for Tim. Yeah. Like, you thought about that for a second. You're like, believable. I could see that. I read this issue. I liked what he was about. Yeah. Tim. Tim's a smart dude. So, Tim's a clever guy. <laughs> He starts feeling around underneath the seats, like kids drop things everywhere. Give me something. Give me something to work with. And he finds a toy car. He's like, okay, they have a little boy. That's awful, but I'm glad I found his little toy car. I'm going to break off the hood of this car, and I'm going to use the edge of that to cut myself free. So then the Joker laughs when he's like, oh, hey, side note, I uh, planted that car there. I'm going to throw it out the window now. You know, just like giving you false hope. Oh, blah, blah. So like the Joker's like, I planned ahead. Yeah, it's awful. He pulls up to an unknown fast food joint because he says that he really wants to get one of those eggnog milkshakes. It's like they're pure fat, but I love them. Yeah. Un- by unknown, we pretty much hints at what it is with the clown with the red hair and white cheeks and mm. very much a... You'll never know. Yes. Knock off McDonald's. <laughs> the red and yellow color scheme of the employees. But, you know, pulls up to the window, you get your like, oh, can I take your order? And I love this. Yes, indeedy. Thank you. Yes. And he gives like a 20 item order and... There's no period in there. It's just, a, you know, punctuation-wise, a series of commas. So you know he's just hitting it as fast as he can. And like I said, you can just hear Mark Hamill delivering this. Yes. In the Joker voice. Just over and over. And the woman on the other end of the speaker is just like pleading, like, you have to stop. Like, slow down, slow down. So he pulls up and just starts yelling. And he's legitimately mad. Again, that's why I love this version of the Joker. It's not a put-on. He just has this legitimate annoyance with this person. He's like, I demand to speak with your manager. And the manager comes up. He's like, how am I to help you? And the Joker shoots him in the face. He doesn't even look at him. He just has like the biggest frown and shoots this guy. So annoyed that he couldn't get the milkshake that he wanted and all the other snacks. Meanwhile, the woman that was running the counter just goes, is like, you can see her off to the side, just eyes agape, shocked, obviously. I love his line after this, though. I really wanted those shakes. And... I don't think we credited the artist. Let's go back a step. Because they deserve a notice. Because the it's spectacular. Well, they didn't have it up front. Do they have it in the back? From the windows God damn it. to the walls. Don Kramer. Don Kramer on pencils. Fantastic. This is great art. Yeah, he sells every emotion. 
He said those like legitimate emotions that the Joker's feeling, not like that's just part of him. He's that level of crazy. And he goes from anger and disappointment to just going like super happy and just like, oh, well, life's filled with disappointment. And then he turns to Tim. He's like, oh, by the way, 100% going to kill you. Yeah, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was lying before about letting you go. And I uh, might as well just take this ball gig out now because, well, you know what? I want to hear you beg for your life. So to cap off the evening, you know, before some child murder, the Joker wants to take place in some child murder. Well, Tim's like, eh, I don't know about that. The Joker takes his now relatively beaten up SUV. What would the multiple people who have rolled on the hood and under the tires? Yes, in multiple directions. And set sail for Santa Claus. And children in his lap. And, you know, he wants Tim to beg for their lives. He goes, last chance, Junior. Sure you got nothing to say for dear old Santa Claus? To which Tim drops a classic Marx Brothers line. You can't fool me. There ain't no sanity, Claus. And then the Joker laughs and swerves away. Well done, Tim. Well done. And, you know, we've seen the Joker have a full range of emotions. He's going to have more, but you have never seen a bigger and happier grin on the Joker's face. The one he just gets to talk old comedy movies with Tim. He's genuinely, like... Just excited. Yes. He's like, I can talk about the Marx Brothers with anybody. It, like, totally di- just diverts him from his plan of mayhem and murder. And I love Tim, because it's so obvious what he's doing, but it works so well. Joker's like, oh, you know, kids these days don't appreciate the classics. And Tim says, like, oh, yeah, I love the big store. John movie. Happy. Yeah, Joker's not happy with that. He's like, I thought you were a fan. It's absolutely from A Night at the Opera. You know, the most famous Marx Brothers movie. Yes. And Tim's like, no, no, it's not. And Joker starts lecturing Tim, telling him, like, blow for blow the scene. He's like, no, it's from this and this and this. And since the car is at 92 degrees and Tim is wearing, you know, a leather skin-tight suit, hand gets a little sweaty, gets a little slippery. And when the Joker's distracted, talking about the Marx Brothers, Tim cracks him in the jaw, gets his hand loose. I, it's such creative writing to set that up as the out for Tim. That, like, the Joker's idea of torture ends up being, like, why he loses. Tim grabs the rearview mirror, pulls it out of the car, starts beating the Joker with it, dives into the back seat, and when the Joker goes to throw a punch, Tim moves the dead man with the, like, big Joker grin in front of him, so he cuts his knuckles on his teeth. Nice job. Gross. And then when the Joker tackles him, says he's gonna go full Batman on his ass. That was one of the best lines. Grabs the can of knockout gas, sprays the Joker in the face who has to dive out of the car so he doesn't pass out, who is then immediately hit by a tractor trailer. I love it. He goes, ah, hell, I can take a joke. (laughs) This weren't happening to me. It would be funny. And the Joker is hit, knocked off the overpass, and falls into some kind of open vehicle. Yeah. And then, hey, it's a Batman story, so Batman shows up. It's like, hmm, you did good. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Merry Christmas to all. All's well that ends well. The Joker was hit by a truck. Except for the multiple people that got ran over in the Christmas holiday season by the Joker. Or shot. That too. Or poisoned. That's also a problem. Orphaning a child. Not really a great way to spend the holidays. Like I said, this is a great series of one-shots. This is my favorite. What was it? Uh, Bat... I'm not sorry, not Batman. Detective Comics number 826. Sleigh Ride. Yeah, all this stuff, this whole Dini run, and he did it for about a year. And boy, it is just a crash course. And it's a little bit like what we did with Hush. Yeah. But I mean, just, they're not connected. And it's not as, like, overwhelming. No, just, I mean, they're all one-shots. It's a series of one-shots. You don't have to tie all these webs together. No. I think maybe two, there might be one two-parter in there. I haven't read it in a little bit. But boy, they're a great series. And Dini is a great writer, and I love having him on this character. This it was is, fun. Yeah, it's probably my favorite Joker story. Really? I mean, there's bigger ones, but just characterization. Mm. This, yeah, just kind of get a little psychology lesson on the Joker. I mean, it's chaotic, but he's having fun with it, and there's humor in it, and it's just insanity. and it's fun chaos. He, he's, he's all over the place. It's enjoyable. But he's also methodical and intelligent, and it, yeah, it's crazy. I love this story. It's one of my all-time favorite Batman stories. Good. Just without the Batman. The Batman. Hey, it works with Tim. It's probably my favorite Tim story then, by default. Yay, Tim. Yeah, it's going to be a shortest show this week. Whatever. What can you do? Well, it's all all 11 o'clock at night, too. We're dealing with a one shot. Yeah. I barely touched my gin. You didn't. You guys got to touch that gin and knock off lime aid. Wow. Yeah. Well, we've finished our review, so now it's time for letters to the editors. Not to be mixed up with letters to Sanity Claws. All the questions, number one. Damn few answers. Here's another one of your letters to the editors. Make it so. 
That's a great line. It is. What was that? I think that movie is 1935. Highly recommended. It. It's funny. It holds up. Get after it. Oh, yeah. I guess if you want to buy this book, too, it's only in one collect edition. It's an out of print trade. Um, what's it called? Batman Detective by Paul Dini. Go buy it. It's great. But you have to do it through a third party. You can't have mine. Side note. A new law calls for all superheroes to hire a secretary. Whose job do you want? I assume that means whose secretary do you want to be? Hmm. Tony Stark's secretary would be kind of cool because he has all the cool stuff, but he's also very touchy. It also deals with, deals with like a massive corporation, so you'd have to deal with like a board of directors and just a company. I wouldn't want to do that. Clark Kent's super uh, secretary would be kind of cool because you're working at the Daily Planet. Or you'd be no, you'd probably have to be up in the Arctic. The fortress. oh yeah, you'd be kind of isolated. It's no fun. Spider Man, you'd have to deal with angry calls from J. Jonah Jameson. Where's Parker? Yeah. Dr. Manhattan, he's walking around naked all the time. You don't know when he's going to change reality, make a new one. Uh, I think I want to go for, like, a hero who's just never going to get a phone call. Like, the real low-end kind of people. Aquaman? You're going to have to be underwater. Martian Maneater? Manhunter? No. Whatever. I mean, you could... Sure, it'd be a new What about one. the Weatherman? That's not a real one. That was just made for that movie. Human Torch is always on, like, setting things on fire. And he's getting denied bank loans left, right, and center. Yes. Nice job. Good pull. I don't know if there's any, like, superhero that you'd want to be a secretary for. Millie the Model. It's an old Marvel book. Batman already has one. Alfred. Go after, like, a knockoff hero. Captain Planet? Yeah. That officer would have to be spotless. His one weakness is pollution. <laughs> That's a good you point. Get, you gotta really clean, him. yeah. And you'd have to use all natural cleaning chemicals. You couldn't use, like, stuff that's not nature safe. Wolverine, um, not really good. I'm gonna say... If you're Charles Xavier's secretary, you're pretty much running a school. You gotta write all those late passes, well, deal I with mean, detention. You can never lie. He'll know. Yeah. I'm gonna say two choices. Because they're both, like, hilariously terrible. Well, I mean, just in the books, they're terrible. I don't know how about being their secretary. One, I would say Booster Gold. He's a time traveler from the future who's just a colossal screw-up. And because he's a time traveler, I feel like you can't be responsible for keeping his schedule. That's just asking too much of an individual. Yeah. What about the Flash? I mean, he has a museum, and so he's getting attacked. What about Barry? If you're Barry, you don't have a job, so you really wouldn't have a job. He has a job usually, just not in that one terrible movie. Or that other terrible movie. Get a job! Yeah. Live action Barry, except in the TV show. You tell him. The good one. Hawkeye? Well, yeah, he's not doing anything. That's fine. Yeah, Hawkeye's pretty easy. Gotta be a secondary four. Oh, need some new arrows? How about a bow? New, new bow? How about some targets? I mean, wouldn't they all live in Avengers Mansion? They have Jarvis there already. And Vision? No, just Jarvis. He's, uh, he's a butler in the books. Oh, yes. Or go with someone real low-key. Go with the elongated man. He's a DC character that's not as popular as Plastic Man or Mr. Fantastic. The character no one's calling, who's currently on The Flash for some reason. Hmm. TV show. But yeah, the elongated man. No one's going after the elongated man. No, no. That's kind of a... Let me tell you all his enemies. Okay, I'm done. He's the elongated man. You know, just don't mess with him. People will mistake him for Plastic Man. Yeah. It's about as bad as it's going to be. Quasi-recycled man. What about uh, Wolverine? Would you want to be Wolverine's secretary? I mean, I guess he's on... You'd have to do no, a lot of laundry. What? There'd be a lot of laundry to be you know doing. What? No, he's on too many teams. It would involve too much coordination. How is he on that many teams? You don't want to be Bruce Banner's secretary. You do one thing wrong. Mm. I told you to collate these papers. Ugh. I think you know how papers work. That's what we just learned. Oh, yeah. It's my answer. The elongated man. No one cares. <laughs> we'll leave him alone. I, I really don't have an answer. Duff man. I don't want to be Duff man's secretary. <laughs> just drink all the beer. Yeah, there you go. Duff man. That was my answer. Duff, man. So close yet so far. I think it's a great answer. Yeah, I guess that's it. Well, it's the holiday season. You had your 40% off Black Friday sale and Small Business Saturday sale. Any yeah, holiday was... specials coming up here between now and the festive times? I literally just had a massive two-day sale. Oh. Are you doing anything special for the Hallowell Christmas Parade tree lighting? I don't think so. Okay. Well, that's really... Uh, the weekend was good. It was gracefully good. Nice. Yeah, I appreciated the weekend. Do you think you'll have like a, a Christmas special coming up before Christmas? I don't know. I, that's, that's the honest answer. All right, well, know. I'm just trying I'm, to... Maybe I will. Maybe I'm I asking will. some prying questions. If I want to stop by the shop to get some uh, great Christmas presents and stocking stuffers... Get a gift card. Oh, that's a great stocking stuffer. Do you do the plastic cards or do you do the paper ones? I do a paper one, but you get an envelope. Ooh, special envelope. And I stamp them with my official seal. Do you seal it with a kiss? No, just a seal. 
Do you accept letters to Santa Claus? Yes. Did you put the Christmas hat on your turtle? Not yet. I haven't started the Christmas stuff yet. Oh. Around the house, yes. At the store, no, I wait. Just because I got to listen. Leon is here at the house. I got to listen to that music nonstop for like 23 consecutive days. Christmas music? Yeah, because I have um, the station ready to go. It's mostly Christmas music, but with guitar. Ooh. We like guitar Christmas music. So this was at 210 Water Street in Hollowell? Yeah, I guess we'll... We'll wrap her up. Ooh, there you go. Top. The rap rap. Oh, God. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Oh, that's going to be in my brain now. It's the rap rap. No, I'm not going to sing it, but I could. That's not. My <laughs> man. I did the whole 12 days of Christmas. No. <laughs> and a pizza with pepperoni. Damn it. What have I done? Uh, do you remember that horrible moment of realization? like That they're wearing sneakers? <laughs> well, no, that like they're doing all 12 days. Yes. They're not going to cut it down. It's the full song. And the kids couldn't look any less enthused to be there. That was just the moment of like, how? Why? Why all 12? But this is such a space filler. The really That's bad, all you're doing The really for. bad fake snow on the street corner where they're in sneakers. We're hitting ahead to try and make the animatronics work. Um, but yeah, if you want to find... That was an old episode. Go look up We Wish You a Turtle's Christmas. About a year ago, actually. Yeah, um... See how much we've improved in a year. I actually think that one was probably better than most. It really was, because <laughs> we were we had some things to say. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Editorsnotecomics.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We've got the show a day early every single week. Patreon.com slash editorsnotecomics. Yeah, you, you give a dollar, you get us a whole day early every single week. A whole day early. Before the layman. Yeah. Or the layman. Ooh. Throwing shade. Wow, you've been working. You've, you've been working on that one for a while, there, haven't you, Chief? Just working on this gin. Had a boy. Rate, review, subscribe. That'd be great for our holiday uh, morale. Yeah. So every single month, I have an ongoing competition. Which show do I co-host that does better? This month, we're winning. Keep it up. Yeah. Well, uh, November. It's still November. It is, and the numbers really don't. I don't have accurate numbers until like the first few days past the month. But as of right now. Solid. We're not solidly in the lead, which is weird because last month we were solidly not. But we haven't had nuns take over our channel in a while. Yeah, that's convenient. That was weird. Yeah, it's the only month we've taken a dip. So I'm not sure that happened another month after the, the, the future episode. Uh, we took a dip then. I can understand why. That was probably not our best effort. <laughs> I tried. Tried to come up with an idea. Failed. It was terrible execution. Especially since you told me about it five minutes before we started the show and I didn't have anything prepared. Oh. You're just like, yeah, show up. It'll be easy. Yeah, well, I'll give you some time to prep. We're doing a best of and a worst of. See, First wicked of January, okay? Come up with five each. That's okay. Put put it. Boom. I already got some of my worst ones. Of the year? You got, I, I only come up with three so far. I'm having trouble with worst. Because generally speaking, if there's a bad thing, I just stop doing it. Well, I know, I know you're probably your number one worst thing of the year is going to be. I I have three written down right now. I'm not going to say what I think they are. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> going to come up with another two. Come back next week. We got more Christmas comics. With turtles. We did. <laughs> yeah, we did. I love turtles. We did a bad one last year. We're going to do a good one this year. Oh, good. Yeah. I like it. And you're on Twitter. At Junior Rich. So tweet, I guess. At him. At me. At anyone. Be polite. Yes. You can. Don't be the worst. Would you want to be the Black Panther's secretary? You know, international travel. International travel? You're in Wakanda? They have all that cool shit? There you go. There's your answer. I chose the guy no one's coming after, and you went with international travel. Winning! There you go. Well, no, I'm sticking with Duff, man. Let's be honest here. <laughs> what kind of beer you got in Wakanda? You got Coors Light? No, thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. More Christmas. It's not a song. Just made it up. You'll shoot your eye out. Also not a song. I don't have anything. All right. We'll be back. Merry holidays. Ho, ho, ho. Now.